Now this vanity started out like many of my builds as a highly technical drawing with detailed specifications. It features flat panel doors, some open shelving for towels or large cinnamon rolls and a bank of drawers. But the real design challenge came in its overall construction. It needed to be somewhat modular so I would be able to transport it and be able to get it up to the second floor bathroom of my client's home. So I came at it with a hybrid approach, 30% cabinet, and 70% furniture, and overcomplicated the heck out of it using every type of fastener possible. So in part one of this build, we are going to cover all aspects of my joinery insanity in plenty of detail, and part two will cover the doors, drawers, finish, and final install. Here we go. Now to really dial in the design dimensions and proportions, I did spend a couple of hours making a full scale drawing on this high quality craft paper from my local U-Haul store. But after staring at it for a few minutes, I decided to take a break and head over to my buddy Kevin's shop where I had the pre-finished plywood delivered that I would need for the cabinet boxes. Now you all recognize my buddy Kevin from Fine Point Cabinetry. He was a real lamb and helped me break down this plywood into manageable width so I could get it in my shop and be able to process it from there. And by process it, I mean rip it down to final width, which was 19 and three quarters. Since Kevin had given me a nice fresh edge on one side, I then ripped off the factory edge on the other side to my final width. And then I could start cutting those longer pieces into shorter pieces for my cabinet sides and bottoms. Now I'm doing this on the track saw, but I'm not cutting them to exact length. I really prefer to do that on the table saw once I have a nice square edge on the bottom and then I know they're exactly the same dimension. With the track saw you can, but with the thickness of a pencil line and if the track is just off a hair, they can be off a little bit. So when I can, I prefer to do it at the table saw. And now the cornucopia of joinery could begin. Let's start with pocket holes. These are going to be the upper stretchers on the cabinet as well as the back mounting cleats. So once I get those processed, then I could start assembling using my next form of joinery, 18 gauge brad nails, just to pin everything in place until I can drive some inch and a half screws in there. And since this is pre-finished plywood, glue really has no effect here. You could use melamine glue, which should offer some holding power, but I have enough screws in here and these cabinets are small enough that the construction will be plenty strong and rigid. And with the top stretcher's pocket screwed in, we could take a break for a candid. That's enough of that. On to the back cleats, which will be used for mounting to the wall. And here's a 360 Oscars spin for you. Now I built this little teeny box just to prop this thing up until I have the legs built. And then I could start on the lamello joinery for joining the face frame to the cabinet box. Now I will be using the Clamax P14 connectors, which you need an access hole to put an Allen key to turn the cam on the clamp, which firmly applies your face frame in place using over 200 pounds of pressure. Now I cut a couple scrap pieces of plywood here just to test the fit and everything and just have it in place while I size my legs. And then I could manhandle this giant piece of eight quarter riffs on white oak that I got from my buddy Tobias down at Willow Brothers Woodcutters down near Princeton, New Jersey. Now the height of the vanity is 34 inches, but I'm cutting these at about 36 or 37, just to give me a little bit of extra length on the ends in case I get any snipe when running through the planer or any other mishap. And my little trim saw didn't go deep enough to finish the cut, so I had to flip it over and finish that last quarter of an inch. And then over to the table saw to start ripping these down to width. Ultimately, these are gonna be about two and three eighths by two and a quarter. The two and three eighths in the front and the two and a quarter inch depth. Why not square? Well, because I wanted them a little wider than the actual thickness of this material. Now I am cutting these a little wider than I need them. That way I can bring them over to the planer and surface them all at the same time for a consistent width. And once I run them through the planer, I have six identical riffs on white oak legs. And with those all surfaced, I could set up a dado stack in the table saw to start cutting the rabbits in all of these legs. These will essentially house the cabinet boxes and allow this whole thing to come together as one solid unit with cabinet boxes and legs. And you can see what that cut looks like off the dado stack, but I'm gonna have to clean up that rounded corner. But first, in order to maintain the same setup, depth of my blade and distance from my table saw fence, I will need to do a plunge cut on the other leg. Since these are both stopped rabbits, one you can go all the way through to your cut line and the other one needs to be a plunge cut. 
Now this technique can be a little unnerving if you're not experienced. So if it's not something you're comfortable with, you can certainly make all these rabbits on the router table. I prefer to do it on the table saw because it's much faster. And since I'm using a five blade dado stack, that's about a hundred carbide teeth versus a router bit, which will probably have two. And on the router table, you have to make multiple passes to clean away all that material. Now to square up that little corner left behind by the table saw, I'm just tacking on a few scrap pieces with double-sided tape and then using a pattern bit, I will ride that bearing along those two pieces of scrap that I taped down and clear away that waste. Once I make a couple of passes, I can remove my scrap plywood and now use my new shoulder to ride the bearing along to clean out the rest of the waste. And then with a little chisel work, we can square up that corner. Okay, now you can see with our groove squared off, it's going to fit on the side of the cabinet. It'll be flush with the inside of the cabinet box. And this face frame material will actually be thicker, so I'll have a 3 8 of an inch setback. And I want it from the bottom of the face frame to the bottom of the leg to be 3 inches. And that's what we have, 3 inches. Now I can grab the lamello and cut some slots for the Clamex connectors. That way I can turn the screw and lock this into place on site. And I'll do this on both sides. Now I will be using the one-two punch of the Lamello and the Festool Domino here. So the Clamex connectors with the Lamello will allow me to turn those cams and clamp it in place. And the Domino will add that extra glue strength with that loose tenon joinery. And once all the slots were cut, I could drill the access hole for the Clamex connectors so I can get that Allen key in there. And then I could cut all the mating slots for the Domino and the Lamello in the leg. You can see the, oh, elbow cam, it's back baby. But as you can see on all my layout lines, I have a D or an L. So that tells me lamello or domino because it's very easy to cut the wrong slot in the wrong location. And once all my slots were cut, I could insert the corresponding connectors, Clamex for the lamello, the domino for the domino, and then pop these legs on and see how they fit. And then a quick turn of the cam clamp locks everything in place nice and tight. And these should be flush with the inside and they are. Then I could just mark the tops of these to cut to the final length. I'll do that over on the table saw. Now you might be asking why not at the miter saw? I just get a much cleaner, nice cut on that three horsepower table saw than a miter saw. Meanwhile, I saw Jerry and Lola and something seemed to be brewing. Cat fight? Maybe. Jerry looked to be in the playing mood, and Lola not so much. Hmm. Hey, you can't fight. <laughs> oh boy, look out. That's when you know things are escalating. Hey, you can't fight. Now that the rabbit for the center cabinet was all cut and fitted, I could work on the other side which would accept the flanking cabinets, the left and the right. Now, since these cabinets sit higher, then that center cabinet, that rabbit does not need to go all the way down the leg, as you can see here. And just like on the longer rabbits, on the shorter ones, I would have to do a plunge cut on one, and then I could do a full stop on the other. So once one was cut, I could then transfer my layout lines to make sure I have the exact same height on both, and then matching up that layout line on my leg to the layout line on the fence, which indicates the end of my blade. I will just pass that all the way through until those two lines meet, and then back away. And that depth of cut is confirmed by taking a piece of plywood and then making sure everything is flush. And then just like the other rabbits in the front two legs, I'm using some scrap plywood here and then a templating bit or pattern bit to clear out the majority of the waste and then clean it up with a chisel, nice and square. Now I could do a little rough layout to see how everything is gonna come together scale-wise, proportion-wise. Oh, hello, Lola. I always need a really good visual as I'm building something just to make sure I'm on the right track. Don't, oh jeez. Yeah, let's not knock those over. Once all my rabbit locations were confirmed and I cut them in the right corners, then I could start cutting down the plywood for the cabinet boxes on each end. Went through the same process as I did for that center cabinet, roughly broke them down using the track saw, and then over to the table saw to get them to their final length. I also needed to rip down some more stretcher and cleat stock. This is set to about three and a half inches wide. And once those were ripped to width, I could set up a stop block at the miter saw and cut them all to the same length to make sure that my cabinets would all be the same width. And with all my cabinet parts neatly stacked, I could start assembly. Just like the other ones, brad nails to secure everything, and then drive screws into pre-drilled countersunk holes. 
And then I could start playing the shell game again, moving things around, and deciding on what the most logical next step should be. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I guess we should start laying out for the dominoes and the lamellos in the newly cut rabbits. But for, oh, thanks, Jerry. I kind of need that. So as you can see, I wrote down some measurements there. Those were the distances from the edge that I placed all my slots at for the lamello. So I'm just laying those out on the cabinet box as well. Ah, dang paper. To make sure they're all in the right place. And then carry those layout lines around for visibility. Now, since the sides of the vanity will never be seen because it's gonna be tucked in between two walls, I'm going to be attaching the rear legs using screws to the cabinet box. I'll screw them and then plug them and sand them so you'll really never see it. And it just makes construction a little bit easier. So with everything laid out on my cabinet box and my legs, I can plunge for my lamellos and dominoes on said legs and said cabinets. Now I did make a pretty boneheaded mistake when I was laying out all my lines, and that was I forgot to take into account the width of the fence on the lamello. So when I went to go cut my slots, um, I was a little off my layout line. So basically had to disassemble this cabinet on one side as well as the other in order for that fence to get into position and make my slots. Not a big deal, but if I had glued this thing, then it would have been more of a problem. And unbeknownst to me at this point was there was also going to be a problem with this rear leg, which we'll get to shortly. But I figured I'd take you along for my absent-minded ride. So as you can see here, pre-drilling those and screwing this leg to the back. And then once it was flipped over, I could attach the legs to the front of the cabinet, stand it up and spin it around. And then attach this whole right side to the center cabinet and then do the same thing with the left just to see how everything fits together and give a good picture of how this thing is actually going to look once assembled. And here's what I did wrong on those back legs. So the dimensions of the vanity front to back need to be about 21 inches. I have a 22 inch counter going on top so that gives me some overhang and a little leeway in the back depending on how the wall is. But what I did here by just rabbiting this back leg is it now sticks out an inch and an eighth back. So what I'm going to do is take this off and then run this rabbit all the way through so it'll just be a groove. That will allow me to slide this forward and it will be flush with the back. Now instead of screwing from the back, I'll screw from the side. I'll still plug those holes and you'll never see this anyway because it's going to be between two walls. And with that, it's one step forward and a one step back. So over at the table saw, I'm just gonna rip off that piece close to my layout line as I can, and then switch to a cross cut to get me a nice clean line across the bottom. And then I'll just snap that off and clean that up with a chisel. And now I could drill new holes. Same layout lines, just wrapped them around. I'm using a 3 8 inch bit here because I'll create 3 8 dowels later to plug those. Now, even though the end panels of the vanity will not be seen, as I mentioned, they'll be tucked between two walls. I still want to dress up those nicely, hide the screws and make it look like a piece of furniture just in case they ever pull this thing out and want to take it with them. So at the table saw, I'm just going to cut some rabbits in the back of these pieces of white oak to house a little plywood panel, which I will now cut down to size at the table saw as well and then I could get them all glued up. Now I'm not doing anything fancy here, just gluing that plywood panel into the rabbit of that white oak rail top and bottom. Once I get the glue spread, it's just a matter of assembly. And I do wanna keep these things as flush as I can on the ends, but they are a little oversized. And when they're all dry, I'll take them out of the clamps and trim them to size on the table saw. But first, we're gonna to need to let those dry for a little while. And while those were drying, Jerry looked over the blueprints and decided the best thing to do next, besides sniffing that drill, would probably be to lay out for our bottom rails and then start cutting all the stock for the bottom rails, the intermediate rails, and the top rails of the cabinet. I think it was a solid plan. So I went into the stock room and grabbed some more Riffson white oak, cut it to rough length on the miter saw, ran those pieces over the joiner to get one flat side, then gave Jerry a little shooka shooka. And then through the planer to get a parallel side and make sure these boards were nice and flat. And then over to the table saw to rip them to final width, which was an inch and a half. Now I did rip them a little oversized and then ran them through the planer to make sure they were all consistent. Now to size these, I'm just using relative dimensioning, which is just putting the piece in place and then marking it with a pencil and then cutting to that line. 
and I'll do that over at the table saw using my cross cut sled. You may be asking, why not the miter saw? I just find I get cleaner cuts on my table saw. And when I have butt joints like this, where the rail needs to meet the leg perfectly for a seamless joint, I trust the table saw over the miter saw. Yes, even over a $1,500 capex. But my miter saw does have some issues. Now we'll be attaching these rails using the Lamello and the Clamex connectors. You could certainly use pocket screws here if you wanted to and come from underneath for those bottom rails and, and on top for these top rails. But this is just my preferred method because I need to break this thing down, put it back together, break it down, put it back together. And using these Clamex connectors just make that so much easier than pocket screws. So with all the slots cut in the cabinet boxes, now I can make the corresponding slots in all of the face frame material. And don't forget the access hole for the Allen key. And at this point, our end panels had served enough time in the clamps so we could get those out and then over the table saw, trim them to their final width. Now you can see I put a little backer piece on that top rail just to prevent any tear out from happening there. It's a little easier to hide if something happens on the bottom rail, but the top rail, not so much. And I didn't really get anything on the bottom rail anyway. Most of the time that tear out can be greatly minimized by raising your blade higher if you feel safe doing that, as well as making the cut a lot slower through the blade. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if this thing slides in here. It's a snugly fit, but fits nicely and there's no gap. So now I can just clamp this in place and then move over to the Western side of the vanity and clamp that panel in place. Then it was the fun part, inserting all the lamello connectors and then popping all these rails in between the legs turning that Allen key and having everything nice and tight and hiding all of those plywood edges. And now just to lighten the mood, a little bit of Lola and Jerry footage. Okay, so what Jerry and I are working on here are the lower rails on the front, the sides and the back that the bottom shelf will sit on. So I've cut these to inch and a half wide to match the inch and a half face frame over here. That way it's a continuous line all the way across. And what I plan on doing is dominoing it into the legs here on the sides, front and the back. But the tricky part here is this area here. Right now, this is showing pre-finished maple ply, but it needs to show white oak veneer ply. But I need to do this in a way where the bottom shelf doesn't like really notch notch around this leg it may look a little hokey so i'm not quite sure what i'm going to do there yet so stay tuned and see what i figure out because i don't know yet all right what i've done here is glued up two more leg blanks for these back legs unfortunately what i'm going to have to do is do a double notch notch this here and then notch down here in order to fit under the rear of the vanity but this will serve a couple of purposes once this slides in, now this back will be supported, the bottom will be supported, and then it will also tie these two cabinets together and make this thing rock solid. So I'm gonna do some layout here where these notches need to be, set up the dado stack on the table saw, and make my cuts. Bit of a nutcracker, I'm not gonna lie. Luckily, I was wearing an athletic supporter, and with all my layout lines laid out, I could head over to the table saw. I'm using a stop block here to make sure I get in the same position on all of my legs. And after that first cut, creating that initial shoulder, then I'm just gonna clear away as much waste as I can, but not go all the way down because that will eventually create a very unstable piece since that would be very difficult to remain flat. Now, each of these legs has two rabbits and unfortunately they are different lengths. One needs to go almost all the way down to the bottom and the other one comes down about halfway to accept the left or right side cabinet. So here are both legs with the full length of material removed and thank you, Lola. And then back to the table saw for the other side to bring it down just far enough, lift it off right to my layout line and then load the dado stack back in to chew away as much material as I can until the waste piece just falls off. And then it was dry fit time. 
You can see the left side rabbet supports the left cabinet and the right side rabbet supports the middle cabinet all the way down at the bottom. And then I'll screw from the inside of the cabinet since those won't be seen. Then it was time to cut the stock for the lower rails or apron that will house the lower shell. So the outside piece is wider and the front and back are about an inch and a half square. So once I kind of get those sized, then it was time to cut all my domino slots. Now, because the front rail is set back from the front of the leg by three eighths of an inch, I'm limited with the Domino 500 at where I can place my slots. So I first set my fence to 10 millimeters and make all my slots. And then I adjust the fence to 20 millimeters, which offsets it by 10 and make all those slots. And then I'm left with a double stack slot that looks like this. Then I wanted to lay out the top of my rail and wrap that around my leg so I know where everything goes. And then I could set my domino to 20 millimeters for the first cut and then the second cut will be 30 millimeters. So why 20 millimeter and 30 millimeter? Well, we already did one at 10 millimeters, which covers the offset of the leg. So now we need to go another 10 and then another 10. That way I have two slots that are offset from the front of the leg, 10 millimeters. Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me too. Now, rather than break down the whole vanity into individual pieces, which would have been the easiest and more sane thing to do, I decided to do all my domino mortises in place, which proved to be a little bit difficult, especially in the rear of the vanity, where I had no other choice but to lay down on the job. Oh, that was bad. Now I can cut all the mortises in the end rails, so doing that on the Domino 500 as well. You can see I got a couple of stop blocks set up there and clamped to my fence so I can just slide it in, flip it around and double decker again. And while things were rolling along, gaining momentum and I was really starting to pick up some steam, I hit a brick wall. All right, mistake time. So when I was laying out for the Domino here, I drew my line, which is parallel to the top of the rail here. And then I drew this line, which is the top of the decking that will go across. But what I was supposed to do is take this board and put that on that top line because this will line up with the decking and then make a center line down, which I don't know if you can see, but I did make a mark there. But I think I got distracted and did something else. So instead I went to this line here. So I did it here and here. Luckily, I didn't drill the slot that goes parallel to that. So what am I going to do? Well, only about half of this would show. Luckily, I caught it with minimal damage because this is really the only patch you're going to see. I did not make any slots on the other end yet. I actually caught myself when I was going to make those. So, so I'm going to plug it and then I'll drill my slots in the correct location here. Now to make the patch, I first start by plunging just slightly into a piece of scrap wood so I know the shape that I need to cut out. Then over at the table saw, I'm just gonna kind of trim this off until I'm left with just this little teeny square or rectangle. And then I take over to the spindle sander and keep working it, working it down to my layout line until that ridge pretty much disappears. And then since it was made a lot longer than I need, but I need two of them over at the bandsaw, I'll just cut them in half and make a twofer and then apply some glue in the slot and then hammer it home. Now you're gonna see me trimming this off and it makes it look like I did this right after I glued it in, but I did not. I let this set up overnight. You really wanna let that glue dry before you trim and sand any kind of plug like this. Because anytime you use PVA glue, the moisture is gonna expand it. And if you sand it down too quickly, once it fully dries, it will shrink below the surface. And as you can see, it's not perfect, but again, only half of it may be seen, which will be way down on the floor and in the back of the cabinet. So, so it will be pretty hidden and out of sight and you will have to go out of your way to even find it. Now we can get this assembled and move on to the lower shelf slats. But first I needed to consult my blueprints just to see how many I had kind of specced on there and the thickness. I couldn't remember. Ah, okay. To figure out all the measurements for my lower slats for my bottom shelf, I drew this little schematic. I drew a leg on each side, took a measurement from the inside to the inside, which came out to be 23 and 13 16. Now I knew I wanted seven planks. When you have seven planks, that means there's eight spaces in between. So eight spaces, and I wanted them at three eighths of an inch. So when you multiply that out, it gives you three inches. So then I just subtract that three inches from my overall width 
and it gives you 20 and 13 sixteenths. I'll divide that by seven for the seven planks we need. And that gives a final measurement of 2.97 inches wide. So basically what that means is I'll rip them to three inches on the table saw and then run them one pass through the planer just to take off that little bit. And if they're off just a little bit, not a big deal. And for the metric people, 602 millimeters was the overall width. Eight spaces would have to be at nine millimeters each. That equals 72. And when I take 602 millimeters minus the 72, that gives 530 millimeters divided by seven planks equals 75.714285 millimeters. So, stop telling me metric's easier. <laughs> All right, let's break down some more riffs on white oak. Do that at the miter saw just for the roughly. And then over to the table saw to rip down 14 of these slats to just a hair over three inches. And once they were all ripped to rough width, I did run them all face down through the planer to get me down to three quarters of an inch. And then back to the table saw. And to ensure I cut them all to the same length, you can see I set up a stop block on my little sled here. And once those were cut, I could go over to the planer and get them all down to 2.97 inches or 75.714285 millimeters. And I did cut a bunch of 3 8 inch spacers just to put them in between, make sure I had all equal spacing. Okay, now on to the next mistake. So I foolishly cut all these shelving planks to the exact length from the front apron to the back apron, leaving no overhang, which creates this weird flush look. It really should overhang a little bit. And then I was gonna put a little chamfer on there. Now I talked to my buddy Matt Moore and Kevin at Fine Point how best to attach these to keep the fasteners hidden, yet be strong. Now my initial thought was to come from underneath with some stainless steel screws. That's pretty discreet and strong. Some of the other ideas thrown around was the domino, also the lamello, pocket screw from the back, and then up into the bottom of each plank. But then the idea was also thrown around of actually pushing all these back so that they are flush with the top of the front rail and the back rail. This gives a much cleaner and sleek look to it. I really like that. So I reached out to the client, I gave them both choices, and they went with this too, so now, I can actually cut these again to the right length in between the front rail and the back rail. And then I'm still not sure how I'm going to attach these. I think I'm going to do it with the domino, but I may also use a lamello. So stay tuned for the next scene when I make the decision. Hmm. So while I mull over that, I could get all these cut again to their proper length. And then move on to the other dilemma, which we put on hold for a while, which was hiding the sides of that center cabinet and down near the bottom to hide those screws and that plywood panel. So at the table saw, I have some more white oak here that I am using the dado stack to cut a big old dado groove in. I'm making two passes here, one at about five eighths and then just moving it over a little bit and then finishing this up. And this will house a nice piece of plywood like this. And then I can actually cut that plywood to size and build my little panels. But to do that, I first need to disassemble this whole thing, which thank goodness for dominoes and the Lamello Clamex, which makes it a little bit easier, even though it's never fun disassembling something completely after you just put it together, knowing that you're gonna have to reassemble it and then disassemble it again. Anyway, this panel is going to be attached to the legs of the vanity just using some pocket screws. You're never gonna see this, so I'm keeping it simple. So once my pockets were cut, I could slide that plywood down into the groove we made in that bottom rail, clamp everything in place, and then drive those screws home. And here's what it'll look like from the viewable side. Nice and clean. And now we could get to work on the joinery for that bottom shelf and all those slats. But first, Jerry needs to be lifted up into his loft. And I'm just laying these out using my 3 eighths of an inch spacers and then clamping everything in place to ensure that it doesn't move. And then I could do all my layout lines. And I'm just using a 7 eighths of an inch setup block here. And that ensures that all of my marks are in the same spot. And I'm also labeling everything L1, L2. That means the left side of the cabinet and then labeling everything on the bottom rail as well. And then I could cut all my domino slots. Now I'm cutting one in the loose setting and the other one in the tight setting in the rails. On the slats themselves, those will both be on the tight setting. I just wanna give this thing the ability to move a little bit if it needs to. Now this is all riffs on white oak, super stable, but you never know. 
sometimes things just want to move. And in case you're wondering what that big red fence is attached to my Domino 500, that is the Woodpecker Tools offset base. Now you may be wondering, why aren't you just using the regular fence on the Domino? Well, the Domino inherently has a little fence drift, so it may move up and down just a hair, and that will throw you off vertically. And I really need these to be perfectly flat across, and that offset base does a wonderful job of that. It cannot move because it is screwed to the bottom of the base of the Domino. It also comes with different spacers that let you adjust the height of it depending on the thickness of your stock. And once everything was cut, I could do a dry assembly, make sure everything was looking good, and then assemble it into the actual vanity, which is going to prove to be a little trick, well, definitely tricky with that in the way, during final assembly because there's so many dominoes and things going in opposite directions, but as you can see, it can be done, cat or no cat in the way. And once I had a little practice under my belt on the right side, the left side went together a little bit easier. So then I could just turn those Allen keys and lock it into the center, lock those legs on, and then put the last two pieces of my face frame in place. And of course, reclamp those end panels back on the ends where they belong. Okay, so this is where we're going to end part one of this vanity build. We have covered a lot of ground here, not just the overall craziness of the joinery with the domino and the lamello and the pocket screws, but also navigating some mistakes and some design challenges. But don't worry, because part two is going to be equally as action-packed. We're gonna cover building the frame and panel doors on the left and the right side. We're gonna break out the vac bag to veneer these white oak panels to this MDF core, and then go over hinge selection with these crazy cool black oxide hinges with the help of ceviche. And then we'll dive into why I outsource my drawer boxes and then choosing and installing these super smooth soft close undermount slides from Ceviche. We'll also do final sanding and surface prep. We have quite a few dents to steam out here and some sharp edges to ease. And then the application of the Rubio Monocoat in Castle Brown. And then finally, transportation, assembly, and final on-site installation. So stay tuned for that video because it's going to be packed with tons of info, and if you subscribe and hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when it comes out in a couple of weeks. Until then, maybe enjoy one of my other videos. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the upcoming video on the finale of the Vanity Bill. Oh, hey big guy. What do you think of that outro? Only one take. All right.